The new Addams Family spinoff on Netflix, Wednesday, is everything we wanted it to be and more. Wednesday's time at Nevermore Academy takes us through so many interesting events and we are living for it. In today's video, we'll talk about some of the Easter eggs you might have missed on the show and explain the surprise ending. So keep watching the video if you want to find out more. First up, let's explain the surprise ending of the show. Okay, so it goes without saying, but there are going to be tons of spoilers ahead, so you've been warned. We definitely saw a lot in the finale and we'll explain it all to you. In the seventh episode, Wednesday has her first ever kiss with Tyler, which prompts a vision telling her that the monster tormenting everyone is in fact Tyler. In the finale, Wednesday confronts Tyler about everything. When he insists on leaving and says he's innocent, Wednesday and her friends from Nevermore kidnap him after Bianca convinces him with her siren song. Just as Wednesday is about to torture Tyler, Bianca and the rest are disgusted and decide to call Principal Weems, who then calls Tyler's father, the sheriff, who takes Wednesday to the police station on charges of kidnapping. Luckily, she escapes the charges but ends up being expelled from Nevermore. I'm sorry Nevermore didn't work out for you Wednesday. Wednesday leaves the station, Tyler confesses everything, from being the monster to enjoying the murders and even that his feelings for her were never real, just a part of his master plan. Later, we find out that Eugene has woken up from his coma and Wednesday goes to see him one last time. This is when he says that he doesn't remember much but only remembers that the person who lit the cave on fire wore bright red boots. Wednesday now knows who Tyler's master is. Wednesday changes her plans of going to the train station and goes to Miss Thornhill, tending to her plants in her red boots. She confesses everything and reveals that she's actually Laurel Gates from the Gates family. She was the one who made Tyler realize he was a hide, since his mother, who attended Nevermore before marrying the sheriff, was one too. Following up, there's more. Tyler walks into the room and Miss Thornhill commands him to take care of Wednesday, but he doesn't listen, convincing the viewers that maybe he does have feelings for Wednesday. But wait, another twist is that Tyler was actually Principal Weems, who just heard Thornhill confess everything. Thing. But before Weems could do anything, Thornhill injects her with nightshade poison, killing her. Laurel, who everyone thought was Thornhill, then bashes Wednesday in the head with a shovel, knocking her unconscious. Wednesday is then taken to Crackstone's crypt, where Laurel resurrects him. He stabs Wednesday in the stomach and leaves her there to bleed as the two make their way to Nevermore to complete their mission. While Wednesday's passed out, she's contacted by Goody, who tells her a way to end Crackstone and save her life, but at the cost of never seeing Goody again. Again. Before Wednesday could get to Nevermore, she's found by Tyler, who transforms and tries to kill her. Wednesday is saved by her friend Enid, who recently wolfed out. Unable to fight him alone, she gets help from Tyler's father, who has finally accepted his son for the monster that he is, and shoots him, turning him back to human while Enid heads to Nevermore to find Wednesday. At Nevermore, Wednesday attempts to stop Cragstone with the help of Xavier. She takes an arrow to the shoulder in an attempt to protect him and tells him to leave. Cragstone almost kills Wednesday but finally, Wednesday's able to stab him in the black heart with her shattered sword with the help of Bianca. The next morning, all the students are sent home, and the academy is closed for the rest of the semester. But there are still so many unanswered questions that we don't know the answers to. Tyler and Laurel still pose a threat to Nevermore, and the academy needs a new principal, which would definitely shake things up. Hopefully, we'll get the answers in the next season of the show. Now, let's look at some Easter eggs we got from the show. Up next, the famous Adam's Family Snap. At the start of the show, we saw Wednesday Wednesday figure out the entrance to the secret library of the Nightshade's secret society. She needs to solve a riddle first, hidden in plain sight in a book that a statue of Edgar Allan Poe holds. She solves the riddle and realizes that she must snap her fingers twice for the entrance to open. Fans of the original sitcom from the 1960s would remember how, during the theme song, all the characters snap their fingers twice. Let's take a look at the set design. Miles Miller said that there were a lot of hidden references in the set that was used to film the show, so fans could keep an eye out. We'll give you a hint. In the town of Jericho, take a closer look at the storefronts next time you watch the show. You'll realize that a lot of storefronts in the town are based on the cartoonist Charles Adams' illustrations from The New Yorker. Following up, Uncle Fester's origins. Uncle Fester's origins were never really sure to anyone. Was he Gomez's brother? Was he Morticia's uncle? Throughout time, different theories have been used. In the 1998 live-action series, he was shown as Wednesday's biological uncle. In this show as well, it was confirmed that 
that Uncle Fester is Wednesday's biological uncle on her dad's side. The show followed the origin of Uncle Fester from the 1998 adaptation of The Addams Family, not to mention Wednesday and Pugsley's introduction. In the original films, we saw the siblings being introduced in an interesting way when we saw Wednesday shoot an arrow at a tied-up Pugsley who has an apple in his mouth. In the show, we saw the first scene of the siblings together involving a similar red apple, stuffed in Pugsley's mouth by some bullies, who Wednesday takes care of. Not only that, but Wednesday's interest in archery is also shown again in the show when she's talking to Xavier in the first few episodes. Pugsley, emotion equals weakness. Pull yourself together. Up next, The Blood Rain. In the first Adams Family movie, Wednesday and Pugsley plan a surprise for their elementary school talent show, which involves blood spilling down on them on stage. This was hinted at in this show as well. During the Raven dance, some normie kids decide to prank the outcasts by spilling blood over them at the dance. While the other students are running, Wednesday tastes the liquid spilling down and expresses her disappointment that it isn't even real pig blood. They couldn't even spring for real pig's blood. Following up, Swords and Morticia. In the original films, we were shown that Morticia loved swords. In this show as well, we were first led to believe that Gomez was responsible for a murder while his time at Nevermore with a sword. However, as the episode goes on, we find out that it was actually Morticia who killed the person with a sword and not her husband, who just took the blame to keep her out of trouble. Not to mention Morticia cutting off roses. We all know the scene from The Addams Family, when Morticia is seen cutting off roses and placing just the stems in a vase. Delivered her iconic lines, don't torture yourself, Gomez, that's my job. In the show, this was hinted at when we saw Morticia at the grave of Garrett Gates, as she places a rose stem on the grave and tosses the petals behind her, walking away. Next up, Wednesday's fate. In the original film, remember how we saw Wednesday being fake stabbed by Pugsley in their house while their Uncle Fester watches them play? Yep, that was referenced as well in the show. In the show finale, we see Wednesday being stabbed in the abdomen by Cragstone, seeing her as a threat while he makes his way to Nevermore with Laurel to complete his mission of eradicating all outcasts. Now, fire. One of the most satisfying scenes, for us at least, was when Wednesday, with the help of Thing, set Cragstone's monumental statue in town on fire, melting the face off. While everyone ran away from the explosive fire, we saw Wednesday play her cello with a satisfied grin on her face. Queen behavior, to be honest. In the original films, while she's in camp, during a Thanksgiving play, she takes a stand for the native and turns the play around, ending up setting setting fire to the whole camp as a result. Finally, grave digging. In the show, Wednesday and her mother, Morticia, go clue hunting, while Gomez is behind bars for the decades-old murder of Garrett Gates. This involves digging up Garrett's grave and cutting up a finger, before they're caught and put behind bars as well. The first Adams Family movie also ends with showing us the family tradition of digging up graves in their backyard, an activity that Wednesday, Pugsley, and Uncle Fester especially enjoy. That's all we have time for in today's video. Which one of these Easter eggs did you find the most interesting? Let us know all about it down in the comments section. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and smash that subscribe button for more similar content in the future. With all that said, as always, we'll see you in the next video.